Greetings, everyone. This is Brett with Hammerhead Model Making, and welcome to this new episode. Today, I will be building the Tamiya Panzer III L. If you watched my previous build series on the Tamiya M24, I will be following a similar structure with this one. So this episode is going to focus on the actual construction and painting of the tank itself. In subsequent episodes, I will be tackling the stowage, uh, the crew, and ultimately a diorama. Construction begins with the hull, and in typical Tamiya fashion, everything pretty much falls together flawlessly. The actual uh, torsion bar arms here, they have two locating spots so that alignment isn't an issue. It all fits in perfectly, and you don't have to worry about making sure all of the wheels are level. And the rest of the construction is rather straightforward. Solid mounting points for everything. Uh, the instructions are laid out really well so that it's obvious where everything goes. The only little weird thing here was the actual escape hatch. Uh, it doesn't actually have any locating marks on the hull because some of the, t t some of the Panzer threes didn't actually have those escape hatches. So there's only like a very faint outline of where you're supposed to put it. So I think I got it pretty close. Um, moving on to the return rollers, after cleaning up the mold lines, uh, I'm actually going through and kind of pulling off chunks of what would be the actual rubber. They used a, a solid rubber for the, the return rollers and the road wheels. And they very often got damaged and parts came off and and uh, were, were not uh, in pristine condition. So just using my hobby knife, I kind of chopped those up a little bit and gave them kind of a, a rough edge before installing them onto the actual tank. Uh, there are poly caps included for the drive sprockets so that they are easy to put in and out uh, for ease in both painting and actually assembling the, the tracks later on in the build. Um, various plates go on around the hull for the front and rear portions. And just and similar to the return rollers, I'm now chewing up the rubber on the actual road wheels. These would have been chewed up a lot more than the return rollers would have because all the weight of the vehicle is on these wheels. And if they hit a rock or, or whatever, they would have easily, you know, thrown rubber off. Uh, I, I'm sure there are more detailed ways of doing that, but attacking it with your hobby knife and just trying to kind of randomize chunks out of it here and there provides a pretty decent effect. Uh, fortunately, for the with the Panzer III, there aren't that many road wheels to deal with. It's not like you're doing a Tiger or a Panzer or a Panther that has very many, many layers of road wheels. So they weren't too bad. Uh, upper hole, again, really straightforward, adding various hatches and panels to uh, complete this out. Um, pretty simple. The, uh, the, the parts all fit flawlessly, especially all these panels that actually sit into these, these recesses. Uh, I mean, you just you couldn't ask for better, better fits here. Uh, the, front, uh, the front portion of the upper hole there goes on. And uh, again, great fit. Uh, putting in some of the smaller details like the, the driving lamps and the, you know, the convoy lights, things like that. Um, again, it's all called out really well in the instructions. Tammy instructions re very rarely leave you wanting, so there's never any question of where anything goes or, or how it's supposed to fit. Um, the actual non-slip detail on the, um, the sponson, the, the dust covers there on the side, uh, really nice. I, I was actually quite surprised how, how nice and, and detailed they were. Uh, doing up the, the kit barrel here, you can see that uh, my barrel was actually warped a little bit, and uh, so it required some clamping in order to get that to sit properly. Uh, I think this would definitely benefit from, you know, an aftermarket tun turned aluminum barrel or something. But I made it work, uh, some, some heavy clamping, and, and got it on there. The Commander's Cupola multi-part, quite nice. Uh, it's unfortunately you don't have the option of doing you know, open or closed vision blocks, but still looks pretty good. The actual um, turret here, uh, there's quite a few little pieces that go onto the turret, uh, so make sure you're following the instructions properly because there's it, the, the turret construction actually go, goes across a couple of different um, you know, stages of the, of the instructions. Here I'm sanding out the seam for the, the gun barrel. Uh, I try to avoid using hard sanding things like sanding sticks or emery boards or files 
when doing a curved, when sanding a curved shape like this, because it, it tends to leave, like, you know, a flat spot on there. I find that if I'm using just a sheet of um, sandpaper, or you can also use like a soft sanding sponge, that tends to preserve that, that round shape a little bit more. So before I finish assembling the turret, I'm going to paint all the interior parts white. Um, I will be having the hatches open because eventually I'm going to have crew in the hatches. I'll have the, the commander out of the cupola and then the gunner and the loader out of the side hatches. So some of the interior might be seen. Fortunately, they give you a pretty simple gun breach and, and mechanism in there. So, um, you know, what little you will be able to see, at least we'll, we'll get it all painted up. So I painted it in the, the MIG white. And here I'm just using some Vallejo paint to, to add some chipping um, to the interior. I, I'm going a little heavy on this again, just because if I, I, I want, if you do see inside, I kind of want to see the detail in that, in that cool chipping. So if I was doing like a full interior vehicle or something like that, I probably wouldn't do the chipping quite this heavy, but I think it'll work for, for what I'm going for. And um, just a simple, just, you know, a little bit of, of paint on your brush, run around all the edges, the high, you know, the, the raised parts, and uh, provides a pretty convincing effect. Uh, everything on the interior is given a gloss coat so that I can now give it a wash. And I'm using my my favorite, the the MIG wash, brown wash for green vehicles. Um, I, I, I have multiple other MIG washes now, but I've yet to find one that just, this one always just works for me, regardless of the actual surface that I'm putting it on. Um, I really like it. So I usually give it about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. And then it's just a matter of wiping off the excess uh, with some cotton buds or paper towels or, or whatever works. Um, here I, you see I, I kind of streaked the, the wash a little bit, uh, mainly just to kind of try and give some, some weathering effect on the inside, some, some dirt and grime to the inside of that, that turret. Again, probably won't see it, but... I kind of wanted to push the exaggeration a little bit just so that if you did see it, you know, it would show up. So with the interior painted, I can go and finish assembling the turret. Pretty straightforward. Um, the kit provides that the gun barrel can elevate and depress. So if that's something important to you, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I've less left this one to be, you know, elevated and depressed. It just, I feel like it helps with the painting process. And I'm not quite sure yet how I want the turret to be posed in the actual final diorama composition. So it still gives me a little bit of play in, in how I want to do that. So here we pretty much have all the major assemblies done and we can move on to painting. So everything was primed with my Rust-Oleum 2X black primer as per my usual. And using MIG's Dunkel Gelb, I began laying down the base coats for the tank. I applied this in multiple thin layers. I really wanted to get a nice, good, smooth finish on this. And so typically what I would do is I would mist on light coats onto one, one part, then do the same thing on the next part and so on and so forth, and then come back in with heavier layers until I was satisfied with the overall coat that I was getting. So it, it took a little while, but in the end, I feel like the results are better. And I know some people have, I've, through my interactions on Instagram and online, um, a lot of people haven't been having great experience with the MIG paints. I I really like them and I like the colors that they offer. So I, I, typically what I will do is I will thin it a little bit with some water and then add in a drop or two of dish detergent to kind of help, uh, you know, kind of a poor man's flow improver as you will. And, and again, multiple thin coats and I feel like it works pretty good. So now I'm applying the actual camouflage color. And uh, you may notice that it's actually sp spraying a little grainy. Off camera, I went back in and, and fixed that, respraying the, the, the base color to kind of clean up some of those splotchy spray patterns. And uh, I, I think I just, I, I had something weird going on with my compressor, but I was able to get it fixed. So, you know, shout out in the comments if you notice that. Uh, but the the actual color scheme I picked here, I, I picked because it was kind of atypical from what I've normally seen for German tanks with with the, the yellow color and then this reddish brown color for the actual camouflage. And uh, this this particu particular tank uh, took place 
uh, in the Battle of Kursk. And so, again, it's just another area of World War II that I'm not very familiar, so I wanted to learn more about it, and, you know, eventually I'll be doing some sort of Kursk diorama with this tank. Painting the actual rubber on the road wheels is pretty simple. Um, I don't typically bother with, you know, masks and, and spraying it. I just do it by hand. I have found that when the model actually has a good, you know, raised lip between the actual tire portion and the hub, it's actually really easy to get the paint on there. And, and, and if you thin the paint a little bit, and, and honestly, I was just holding the brush still and just rotating the tire around the brush, basically, it's, it's almost too easy to get those, those tires painted. And again, like I mentioned earlier, fortunately, the Panzer III does not have a lot of road wheels. So this really didn't take too long to get all 12 of them, 12 of them done. Um, you know, if this was a panther or something, a little bit of a different story. But nonetheless, I feel like it works, and it's it's not that difficult. And and just plus the all the added, you know, masking and getting the airbrush out. I just didn't want to do that. So here I'm going back in with some of the base color to hit some of the edges where the actual camouflage is applied. This is basically like my first pass at weathering, where I'm I'm chipping that that brown color down to the yellow color. So really trying to concentrate along raised edges where the camouflage is and around, you know, like these, these access hatches and the fenders and stuff just to, to kind of show a little bit of wear on there. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do some scratches here and there, but um, really this is just kind of that first layer of weathering that I like to do. And, and eventually I'll just kind of subsequently build on that and, and add more to it and, and really create some cool depth and layers to this this uh, weathering. Um, I, I, I figured there'd probably probably be a lot of scratches along the turret, you know, moving through uh, a brush and whatnot. It would, it would scratch things up. Um, here I'm taking a color called Blonde Highlight and just kind of giving a rough dry brush over everything. Uh, this will do two things. One, it'll, it'll kind of highlight all the raised edges on the actual yellow color, but it'll also help to tone down that brown color a little bit and blend it in with a little more to the actual uh, the tank. And it'll just it, it'll just make it look not quite so stark in contrast against the you know the 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 yellow color. And then for the next layer, I'm going back to my German camouflage black brown from Vallejo. This is probably one of my favorite colors, especially when it comes to weathering armored vehicles. And um, first, what I'm going to do is using a sponge. I'm going to apply chipping all over the vehicle in places that make sense to me, uh, mainly along, along edges, raised areas, places where the crew would be moving about a lot, about, you know, often or grabbing things often. Just places to me that make sense. I, raised edges, corners, you know, things that would get hit, knocked, and dinged. Um, access hatches are a good place. You know, the crew is going to be working in there. The maintenance people are going to be opening and closing and hitting it with their tools. So once I've kind of gone over the whole tank with the sponge, now I'm going to go in with a brush and hit very specific areas um, that that the sponge really can't get to. So for example, around these these access hatches, I can I can really control you know where I'm putting these chips and and trying to fill them in into the places where I had previously chipped the brown color so you can add multiple layers of, of chipping there and and scratches and things like that so the the sponge technique combined with brush I really think really draws it out so with all the major painting done I move on to a gloss coat give everything a very thorough coat here so that I can move on to the next stages of weathering, which is going to be washing and oils and things like that, um, and applying the decals as well. So I, I'm using the Alclad Aqua Gloss. So far, this is my all-time favorite gloss coat. So and and I just I really like that it dries quickly, dries hard. I have not noticed any like clouding or yellowing as of yet. So I've I've built um, 20 plus projects using Aqua Gloss and I've just really been happy with it. So giving everything a wash, again, with our, our brown wash there from MIG, and uh, really trying to concentrate, you know, around raised areas, in between crevices, things like that. Just give it a good coat. And um, I, I don't necessarily go too excessive because a lot of the actual grime and grit that I'll be adding will be done later through oils. But this is really just to kind of give a, a quick initial pass and, and 
um, fill in a lot of those shadowed areas. So like I mentioned before, let it dry 30, 20, 30 minutes, and then you can start wiping it off. Um, if you tend to go a little heavy with your wash, you might have to wait a little longer. But, um, you know, for some of the, and, and for some of the hard to reach places, like if there's a very particular corner that you can't get your cotton bud into, um, you can also get like a, a small paintbrush, dip it in a little bit of an animal thinner, and usually you can work out what you need to. Uh, I did end up having to do that a, around some of these details on the lower hull where I just couldn't get the, the cotton bud in. Fortunately, the decal options for this particular tank were quite simple. Just three decals on the turret, and that was it. Um, the turrets, or the sorry, the, the decals were actually a little brittle. Uh, you can see here this this one on the, the rear turret bustle was actually cracked on me. Um, it was a simple fix, but kind of annoying because I feel like this is a relatively you know recent release, and I'm surprised that the decals didn't hold up so well. So once the decals are done and the wash is done, I hit everything with a satin coat. Um, I've, for the last few builds that I've built, I've actually kind of gone away from using a straight matte coat and, and using a satin coat so that it still has a little bit of shine to it. I, I find, I think it just a little bit more realistic. So um, at this point now, I'm starting to do oils and I'm gonna do oils in two stages. I'm gonna do highlights and then I'm gonna do dirt and grime. So here I'm just using a white oil paint and pulling it in downward motion to create the effect of like streaks and, and paint fade and, and things like that. So I just work this all around the vehicle, um, starting on the turret, working my way around and onto the hull eventually. And I'm just using cheap artist oils that I bought at Michael's. I think I maybe spent $18 on a set of 20 colors and they seem to work pretty good. So, um, and plus it gives me a large option for the different colors that I can use. Now I'm going in with some raw umber and sienna oil paints to really kind of work into some of these areas where there would be a little bit more buildup of dirt and grime, uh, especially on the fenders. You know, the crew would be up there on their walking, dirt and mud would be slung up there from from battle, from, you know, moving around whatnot. So I really wanted to kind of give a, a good layer of dirt and grime on there. Eventually, the, the overall effect that I was going for on this was, you know, it, it's been through some dirt. It's been traveling a lot. It's going to have a buildup, but it's not like, like caked in mud. So here I'm using some really thin oil paint and just using my brush to flick it on to kind of give the effect of like splattered mud and, and splattered dirt. Don't forget to get the insides of the fenders. Um, it, for the most part, they're not very visible, but you know, it, it's there and I, and I know that they're there. So now I'm going to work on painting all of the pioneer tools and all the little, all the kit that goes onto the actual tank fenders. Um, I try to group things in way in, you know, basically on how they'll end up being painted, similar things. So, uh, I put certain tools on here that are going to be all metallics, some tools that are going to have like wood bits. Here I've got the, the tow cables. So they were all primed with my um, Rust-Oleum primer. And now I'm dry brushing, do, pretty much doing a heavy dry brush with um, steel from Vallejo. And I, I like doing this dry brush, metallic dry brush over the black paint. Um, I like the effect that it gives. And I pretty much use this for many metallic parts across many models that I do. It's simple and I, I think it I think it works. Um, for the actual tow cable here, there there are clamps that would be holding it down to the hull of the the vehicle. So I'm going back in and painting those with the hull color, and uh, just with a brush. It's pretty pretty straightforward and simple. And I'll be doing the same thing with the rest of the tools as well, um, painting painting the all those little clamps. I didn't necessarily plan on going out and you know, going full detail on this with photo etch and whatnot. So th these aren't necessarily terribly realistic, but they, they work for me. Another one of my favorite colors is Vallejo's Parasite Brown. I found many uses for this. And one of the great uses I like for it is two things. One, I think it's a good match for the color of Bakelite. And two, when thinned down, it makes a good rusty color. So here I'm using that Parasite Brown both to do the Bakelite on some of the tools 
and to kind of give the, the jack here a little bit of rust and weathering to it. I also use it on the tow cables as well. Um, I, I like it. it. It dries dark enough that it's not like super bright orange, but still it's it's there and you can tell that it looks rusty. So with all these little bits and bobs painted, it's time to add them onto the vehicle. Uh, they all have their very specific place that they go with uh, appropriate locating attachment points. So not very not very hard to 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 mess it up. Um, just make sure you're studying the instructions carefully and dry fitting as you go along. If you're curious what those little pins are sticking out of the spare road wheel on the back of the hull, those are actually spare track pins. And uh, those comes those actually come as separate items, so you can you can apply them wherever you want to on the vehicle. But they they recommend that you have them sticking out of that spare road wheel, which I thought was kind of a neat look. I, I really like that. Um, so here we're just adding some of the spare track link on. And uh, one thing you'll notice with me when I'm building armor vehicles is I tend to break up the vehicle into multiple sub sections for painting. Um, I find this easier. I I have seen other modelers who do. You know, they'll, they'll build the whole hull all together in one piece. They'll put the road wheels on, and they'll all paint it as one thing. And, and, I've, and I've seen them do that with, to, to great effect. Um, but for me, it's just it, it helps me uh, better tie in all the layers of weathering and, and painting and all that stuff to have it all separate so that I can, you know, I can vary the weathering on each individual component for, in a way that makes sense to me. Um, I'm using the kit supplied rubber band tracks. Uh, they, they, they weren't too bad. Um, the detail was pretty decent. And uh, I, I didn't, again, like I said, I didn't want to go like super detailed with this. So I didn't bother with getting any aftermarket tracks. Um, the Panzer threes and the, you know, to a certain extension, the Panzer four, they had pretty tight tra track tension. So I really wasn't worried about trying to replicate, you know, any track sag or whatever. So I'm using Tamiya Buff here to kind of give everything a, a light dusting of, you know, a, basically dust and uh, to kind of tone down some of that previous weathering. And now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, putting everything together and uh, all the components are painted and weathered. And uh, so now I can just get everything assembled. And again, this is one of the benefits I think of doing a lot of these sub assemblies is it, in my opinion, makes it easier to when it comes to this final stage of getting everything put together and having it all look well done. Um, I'm using super glue to attach the upper hull and the lower hull uh, just because where the actual two hull pieces meet there was a lot of paint already on there and I didn't want to have to mess around with trying to get my Tamiya extra thin cement in there that it just made more sense for the for the super glue. And uh, once we get the turret on, again, I'm going to leave it so that it's, you know, you can, I can still rotate it and elevate the gun uh, so that I can compose it in the diorama. But now we get the antenna added on and we're done. That's it. That's the tank. I'm going to give it a final overall dusting of Tamiya buff um, just to kind of tie everything, all the components together. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's it. So uh, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this episode and my, you know, crazy ramblings here, but um, please look forward to a couple more episodes with this vehicle. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, we'll be doing crew, stowage, and then eventually a diorama, um, a Kursk diorama. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you aren't already subscribed, please uh, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification button. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I've got another project coming up uh, after this one. Um, that I will be excited to show you. So please stay tuned and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.